Oh, it's Return of the Sweet Phil Tank Tops. Temporarily just got back from the gym. Hit that record button. Let's go. Now, I've been farming torches on my single player, and I don't exactly have the best possible character. You know what happened to me? I got my butt handed to me all the first few runs until I kind of got my gear refigured out and remembered with this little tiny brain I got up here of all the little tips and things of what you need to do when you're out there farming torches and you don't have a perfect character. So if you ever want to get out there and farm torches anytime soon, make sure you follow these different tips and tricks I got for you right now. Now the very first tip is kind of what character you choose to do it. Unfortunately, Ubers are incredibly hard, so you can't do it with literally any type of build in the entire game. If you're rocking that Nova Sorceress, great for getting out there and farming the keys to farm torches, but then to actually farm the torch, that's not gonna work out for you. But actually in Diablo 2 Resurrected, melee characters reign supreme as far as it comes to farming torches. There's a many reasons for that. Everybody knows the main character that everybody uses, that Smiter. He absolutely can wreck with just budget gear, really, and a few other things to throw on there. Smite is a skill that literally never misses, and obviously, if you never miss when you attack, it really helps you out. There's some other melee characters. You can do it with the Barbarian, which is what I was doing it with. Not the most powerful, but it can definitely be done because, like I said, melee characters, the kicks in is an expensive build. You could build it budget too, but there's another one. So really, these melee characters are going to be the ones that work the best due to some of the other tips I give you further along the way with that Smiter being the absolute best one. Now, as far as casters, there's really only one caster in the game that I'm really aware of of anybody using, and that's now that you have the Sunder Charms. The Blizzard Sorceress wrecks everything in the entire game, bar none. It used to struggle with cold immunes, obviously, but now it doesn't even have to worry about that. You can literally just slaughter everything in the entire game with the Blizzard Sorceress, and now the Ubers are no different. Now that you can take out all of the different add-ons, all the different monsters that pop up around them with no problem. So Blizzard Sorceress is the, really the only caster that I know that you can take out these Ubers. So this next section is going to be a few different things, but it's all the different reasons why the actual melee characters are the best for farming Ubers. The first one, we're going to go talk about Crushing Blow. Now, Crushing Blow doesn't actually deal the amount of damage then that the weapon would do. What it does is chops off a percentage of the monster's health every time that that procs. So the higher percentage of Crushing Blow you have on your character, the more chance that the Crushing Blow will happen, chopping off a percentage of the health instead of, like I said, the weapon damage. So if a monster has 70 bagillion health, it chops off the same amount of the life bar. It doesn't matter if you're dealing one damage or 70 bagillion damage. So in general, you're gonna wanna stack a bunch of crushing blow on characters, at least some, so that that crushing blow will proc chopping down their monsters. These Ubers have very high health pools. Next up, you're gonna wanna have, along with that crushing blow, is open wounds. There's other ways to get around this as well. Open wounds seems to be the easiest and most obvious. You can just throw on a pair of gore riders, you can get a little bit of crushing blow, get a little bit of open wounds, and boom, you're done. Now, what is this open wounds really good for? Well, what it does is it stops the Ubers from actually rehealing their health back. They might actually heal their health back faster than you can deal damage to them at times. You might be thinking you throw on Prevent Monster Heal, and while this does work with Diablo Clone, it does not work in any manner with these Ubers, so don't fall victim to that mistake. Open Wounds really is the best bet, but also having them poisoned will also stop them from healing while they're actually poisoned. That doesn't necessarily last all that long, usually in most circumstances. Open Wounds really is the best option. Next up, another reason that the melee characters are great is a form of lifesteal, but it's not the regular lifesteal, the percentage you get on stuff. It's actually a spell called Life Tap. Now you can get Life Tap either for the Smiter, that's why a lot of people will use Exile. You can use these gloves called Drax, or an even easier way, and even if you have Drax, maybe you might wanna go and get one of these wands that actually have Life Tap spells on them. Not the Life Tap that goes towards the Necromancer, but actually Life Tap charges. The most common place to buy these, where I always get them, is I go to a car and act one. You just keep flying in and town and out of town, and her inventory will reset, and eventually you can find one of these wands with life tap on it. Now, what life tap is, is it's essentially like lifesteal on steroids. If you have a smiter or frenzy or anything like that, any of these melee characters, once you get life tap actually to be on the Uber, as long as you keep attacking, 
it is actually very difficult to die, with the exception of Uber Mephisto, that crazy lightning damage that he does, but we can talk about a little bit later how to kind of negate that and help you out. Now we'll jump into making sure you can actually hit the Hoopers, and that is that you need to stack a ton of attack rating on your characters, with the exception of one that is, in order to make contact, because if you're not making contact, the crushing blow's not hitting, you're not life tapping back, and you're gonna have a real bad time. Now that one skill, of course, is Smite. Smite hits every time, no matter how much attack rating you have. That's why it's so overpowered for farming Ubers, but if you're doing any of the other builds, you want to make sure you have a ton of attack rating. Good way to get attack rating, super mega budget style here, is throw on dual angelics. Boom, you automatically get a thousand attack rating right there. Another way you can get attack rating is by having a demon limb, and you go ahead and use the enchant charges. That'll boost up your attack rating a ton as well, allowing you to strike the Ubers more often. Now I mentioned that Demon Limb will slide perfectly right into the next one here, and that is don't be afraid and make sure you're using different pre-buffs before you go out and farm the Ubers. There's a lot of different things like that. One example for the melee characters, like I just said, the, the enchant charges on the Demon Limb. Another one that almost everybody uses is they make themselves a treachery. They go out somewhere, they go stand in flames at the uh, River of Flames. You could run out to Elgin Shank and just get hit a bunch and wait for Fade to proc. What Fade does is it gives you a bunch of extra resistance, and it even has a physical damage resistance on it as well. This is incredibly helpful, and you could even, if you want to, depending on what your gear is, you can take that treachery off, throw on a different armor, and Fade will still be on your character. So you'll get the benefits of having that Fade while throwing on a different armor, getting more damage or more resistance even, or whatever you need to take them out. Another super obvious pre-buff, but somehow I kept forgetting about it. Don't forget to have that CT on switch if you can afford it, and make sure you always re-up your battle orders as often as possible, pretty much every time before you go out and fight a monster. You never want your battle orders to run out mid-Bifisto fight, and you'll just get taken out instantly. Next up is don't be afraid to have different gear options in your stash. You never want to go ahead and make your portals and then be like, oh no, wait a second. I forgot I was going to try to throw this on to get more resistance while fighting Uber and Fisto. Or maybe I wanted to throw on Goblin Toes for more crushing blow instead of having the Gore Riders on. Or G Face instead of Ariad's face. All different type of options like that. Feel free to actually in the shared stash, you get three shared stash pages and one normal stash page. Make sure you have other options for gear. Maybe even strictly for Mephisto, you want to do something different like throw on Guardian Angel and Kira's to get a ton of resistance. Maybe you want to throw on something specifically to get more lightning res like T-Gods, a Wisp Projector. Maybe you're going to throw on a lightsaber just to get more lightning absorb for going after Uber Mephisto. So don't be afraid to have other options of gear in your stash and swapping them back and forth and swapping them around as needed for each individual uber and last but not least could be the most important especially if you don't have perfect gear which i mean if you have perfect gear you probably don't need tips on how to farm ubers right this one is make sure you have enough full rejuvenation potions you usually want to have at least a full belt and you may even want to have more in your inventory in your stash to go ahead and take these guys on if you don't have a perfect character, you might be flying through these and there's nothing worse than running out of potions on your smiter or something like that. And then you have to jump out and go out and take out Rock and Nishu, take out random champions around, just fingers crossed hoping they drop some rejuvenation potions so you can continue your uber run. So even though it seems basic, maybe take your sorceress out, go ahead and go out and get some full rejuvenation potions, or you can do things like gathering up chip gems, transmuting them with different potions, different cube recipes to get rejuvenation potions that way, or you can even at the beginning of ladder, or anytime really, you can just trade for full rejuvenation potions. I'm sure people would probably just give you some for a few perfect gems or something like that. So there you go, that's my best tips here for farming Ubers. I know there's a ton of them, I couldn't put all 7,500 tips in one video. Head down in the comments and let me know your favorite tips and tricks or whatever for farming Ubers that I may have missed in this video. So don't forget to like button and subscribe up. I'm trying to get to 50,000 before the end of the year. It's gonna be a tough ask. We're starting to slow down here a little bit now that we're getting further in the ladder, but double check and make sure you're subscribed up. Peace out, fellas. Don't forget, keep slaying. <sighs>